Black here from Casa Black Gaming, and today I wanted to do a quick loadout for everyone's favorite space insect, the Drake Caterpillar. I am currently working on the review for this ship, but wanted to go ahead and get out this vehicle loadout, which has been long overdue for me, but since I only really just got into the cargo hauling ships a couple of months ago, it is what it is I guess, and better late than never. As usual, if you find this loadout helpful, then please check out my channel for more videos on loadouts, ship reviews, and also one-of-a-kind roadmap deep dives where I go over Star Citizen's development, the good, and the bad. It's always appreciated when you like, subscribe, and comment, which is how I'm able to be found through the muck that is the YouTube algorithm. Alright, so let's go ahead and get into this quick loadout. Now I like to start off these loadouts with these ship components first as they are usually the starting point for anyone who might have just recently picked this ship up and you need to know how to get this ship going with the best components for getting around the verse and staying safe. Alright so for the first component let's talk the power plants which I honestly do not change and I've had no issue but if you insist on changing it or if you've ever found your ship becoming unresponsive you are welcome to use two of the size 3 JS 500s which can only be picked up currently at Cousin Crows on Orison for a hefty sum of 139,750 credits each. These are quite expensive for a component that until we get master modes in is not doing a whole lot but if you happen to see that your ship's power is overloading especially if you happen to swap out any of the weapons for something bigger you might try grabbing one of these first to start with to see if that solves the issue before you buy two now the coolers could also cause an issue but I have not seen it so let's go ahead and go into those now for the coolers you can normally skip these as well like I mentioned as far as we know because they are almost useless for most ships until we get that ship component revamp possibly possibly later this year. However, I will suggest two of the size 3 blizzards which are also found at Cousin Crows on Orison and you can also pick them up at Crew L1 if you absolutely feel the need to upgrade your cooler for whatever reason. Two of these are going to set you back almost 300,000 credits though so keep that price versus function in mind and I would only replace maybe one to begin with and only if you're seeing your weapons or engine overheating and they stop function as I mentioned before with the power plant which for me this has not been an issue but I have not used a caterpillar extensively. Let's move on to the shields. There are three grade A shields that you could possibly go with but the shields that I'm going to recommend here are two of the FR-86s. Now the FR-86s offer up the most distortion shutdown damage over the other two but the other two's max reboot time if they do get shut down is also two to three times shorter in duration. They all have the same health pool but the other two shields distortion shutdown damage is is half or more so they will go out on you faster and with there being some updates coming to distortion damage which we might actually see from NPCs in combat as well as the players distortion shutdown damage is going to be more important than ever. The FR-86 can be found at Cousin Crows and Dumpers Depot on Area 18 and the price for both are going to set you back around 272,000 credits so they're pricey but it's a worthwhile upgrade and should be done second to the Quantum Drive. Okay, last but not least for the ship components is of course the Quantum Drive, and right now the drive I recommend is the TS2, which can be found at Cousin Crows and Crew L5 for around 93,000 credits, making it the cheapest of the ship components and the very first one you should be going for, as the time it saves from the stock engine is very worthwhile, as you can see here on the screen now. These times are way more than half, and make the C2 zoom through space to get your cargo where it needs to go in a flash, or your pirating needs as they are needed fast as well. Well, keep in mind that this engine upgrade is not going to help you with the slow times of escaping the atmosphere since that is your normal thrusters and not the quantum drive that does that. Now we are on the weapons for the Caterpillar. Now keep in mind, the majority of these weapons cannot be upgraded in size, but you can swap out some of the stock laser cannons for laser repeaters or another gun if you would like, which I'm going to touch on first. The pilot controls two size 3 gimbals that each support two size 2 weapon standard, and if you would rather have laser repeaters for these first two weapons, which I would only swap if you're coming under fire more from smaller, faster craft that you're having a hard time hitting, but if so, you can put on two of the CF-227 Badgers, which can be found at center mass on Area 18, or New Babbage as well, as Crew L5. Now, with these same two gimbaled guns, you are able to take the gimbals off to instead use two size 
three weapons, and if you decide to go that route and still want laser repeaters, you can put on two of the CF337 Panthers, which can be found at the two center mass locations on Area 18 in New Babbage, as well as a host of other locations that are listed on the screen. Please keep in mind that the Caterpillar is not great at moving around to chase targets, and once you remove those gimbals, you will need to have the targets directly in front of you to have any chance in hell of hitting them. There are two other size 3 guns at the Pilot Controls, and if you have swapped those other two guns we just talked about to laser repeaters, you're going to need to go ahead and swap these as well, so your weapon speeds match in order to hit your targets more consistently, so pick up a total of four of those CF337 Panthers if you upgrade those other two guns to laser repeaters, no matter which way you go with the gimbals here. Okay, so with laser cannons, if you decide to go all in on those for the pilot controlled guns and you also decide to remove the gimbals from those two guns I spoke of earlier in the laser repeater section, you can upgrade those to two of the FL33s, which you can find at her L4 or her L5. They are currently at Port Alisar as well, but I have no idea if the new Seraphim station will continue to carry those after the 320 update. Now, I do happen to like the FL weapons for no reason really, but if you want to match brand, with the others, you can instead switch to two of the M5As, which are what comes on the other pilot control guns. Or you could go all in on the FLs and get four of the FL33s. You got a little bit of a choice here, but you're not going to see a difference in damage or anything that matters. With the man turrets, they come with laser repeaters, which are how I leave mine, because odds are man turrets will be going after smaller targets that are flying around, and laser repeaters, as mentioned earlier, are better versus smaller targets. However, if you will be going against larger slower targets and want to swap those four laser cannons then pick up four of the m6a's which you will find at many and similar locations i mentioned earlier and those are also on the screen now as well all right there are no missiles for the caterpillar so this is not a concern Okay, and that's going to do it for this loadout of the Drake Caterpillar. I hope you found this information useful, and I'd like to know down in the comments below if you use this ship strictly for trade, or if you're scratching those pirate itches with this ship. It's definitely versatile, and so I'm curious to see if anyone is using it for nefarious reasons. Now, there's no judgment here on this channel ever, unless you're just an intolerant prick who refuses to be civil. Anyway, keeping things on the positive note here, remember to be kind to your fellow gamer, stay hydrated out there because it's hot as hell, and stay positive positive citizens.